Thousands of acres burning in parts of Kentucky tonight as wildfires continue to spread. Investigators say that some are burning dangerously close to homes. Tonight, Lexington police have a warning for pedestrians about a dangerous trend they've noticed this year. Overweight and oversized trucks is an issue. So why are way stations along Kentucky's interstates often closed? WKYT investigates. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening. Tonight, many wildfires continue to burn out of control in southeastern Kentucky. And now the governor has declared a statewide emergency. That order opens up state resources to battle those fires like that one. And the Kentucky National Guard is also helping by deploying three helicopters to drop water from the air. WKYT's Phil Pendleton spent the day in Whitley County, where firefighters have been busy all week. He begins our top story team coverage. Kemp McCollister. Dennis Nelson is on his way to pick up his child at school. He's got a toddler in tow as well, but on the way there, he will pass these smoke filled hills because officials believe someone intentionally set them on fire. I live here, and it, it's a wonder, and I've got, as you can tell, I got a 18 month old and a five year old. I mean, yeah. They could have been out here. The State Division of Forestry says they've had 23 fires in 12 counties. The fires on Tackett Road south of Williamsburg were mostly put out Thursday, but the smoke could still be seen. What goes through your mind, someone doing this on purpose? How crazy can they get? Are they wanting to kill somebody? Fires were active Thursday, also in Harlan, Pike, Letcher, Bell, Knox, and Clay counties. And forestry officials say what's not helping is that some people are wanting to fight them with fire. We have had phone calls from landowners asking if they can set fires back from behind their house to the fire, and we would really appreciate it if they not do that. Forestry officials say leave the firefighting to the professionals who control their fires with good control lines. Because if they do set a backfire like that, we could have crews up on those hills and that fire could overrun them. No property was damaged in any of the Whitley County fires, but volunteer departments were on standby to protect structures as needed. In Whitley County, Phil Pendleton, WKYT. Forestry leaders say more than 1,500 acres have burned so far in Harlan County. Firefighters say they're doing what they can to stop the spread of the fires, but some people are worried about their homes. One man says a fire is burning only 40 feet from his house. Harlan County leaders say so far no homes have been damaged by the fire and no one has been injured. In Pike County, some schools were closed today because of the nearby wildfires. The Division of Forestry says more than 1,200 acres have burned in that one county. WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell flew over the fires in Sky First today. He continues our top story team coverage. Governor Matt Bevan has issued a state of emergency due to the forest fire and wildfire threat across the Commonwealth of Kentucky. We've been so dry here over the past few months uh, that uh, the concerns have grown. And we have also been dealing with some fires across parts of eastern Kentucky. Several thousand acres now on fire in different areas. One of the large fires here in Pike County where roughly 1,200 acres are currently on fire. Yesterday, the smoke was so bad around the Shelby Valley High School that they had to let school out early. No school at three different schools in Pike County today, again, because of how bad the smoke was and how close the flames were. Matter of fact, these flames were also close to a nursing home facility here that is uh, very close to Shelby Valley as well. You can see that there, and you can see the firefighters have also been dealing with the flames. Now, the Kentucky National Guard has also joined the fight. They've sent out three different helicopters to, uh, to join uh, in on the, the fighting the flames across the area. Uh, they're taking out to two Blackhawks and a Lakota as well that all are going to be able to drop around 600 gallon uh, tanks of water to try to extinguish the flames here in this area. In the air on Sky First, I'm WKYT meteorologist Jim Caldwell. A great job showing us what's happening on the ground from the air. We are tracking some rain across the state tonight, but 
Will it be enough to stop the spread of those wildfires? That's a question we've asked Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey now for a couple of days, and we kind of get the same answer every time, Chris. Yeah, I don't think it's going to help in terms of completely diminishing the threat over the next several days, but it's going to help in the short term without question because humidity levels at least are ramping up a little bit, which will slow the progress of some of those fires. And our Defender Radar Network is showing some showers moving in to this part of the world dealing with those fires now into southeastern Kentucky. So on a local scale, it is raining heavily enough in a few spots to actually maybe put down a fire or two. Will it put down each and every fire? It's not that type of rain that we are tracking. But you get in on some of the yellows, some of the oranges there. That's where it's coming down uh, very uh, heavy in terms of the rain. A little farther to the north, you catch a break now, Mountain Parkway. But look what is beginning to pop here into northern Kentucky. As expected, a little broken line of some showers. Wouldn't be surprised if we don't even uh, see a lightning strike at some point trying to come from this into southeastern Kentucky later this evening. But that is with a front that continues to drop in from north to south. And as we go through the evening, Notice how the hour by hour forecast suggests southeastern Kentucky. You've got a shot for rain right on through about 11 or 12 tonight. Not going to rain all the time, but we'll take whatever we can get. Then early tomorrow morning, everything begins to fall apart with a mix of some stars and some clouds that will be showing up. Cooler weather is blowing into town, guys, and that will obviously help things just a little bit as well as we head into the weekend. When I come back in uh, about 10 minutes, we'll expand that hour by hour forecast out for you. A woman accused of hitting and killing two people with her car has been booked now into the Fayette County Detention Center. But jail leaders say Suzanne Whitlow was then taken back to the hospital for more medical care. She is now considered an inmate at the hospital. She's been charged with manslaughter and DUI. Like some police say her car hit and killed Louisville Police Detective Jason Schweitzer and UK employee Timothy Moore on South Upper Street last weekend. According to WDRB, her arrest citation says she hit the two men after driving up onto the sidewalk. Those two men are among the eight pedestrians police say have been killed in Lexington this year. Police say that's one of the highest numbers in the last 20 years. There was also a pedestrian death just this morning. WKYT's Hillary Thornton talked to Lexington police about pedestrian safety. This was the scene around 7 o'clock Thursday morning after police say 26 year old Dylan Hahn attempted to cross Richmond Road. Crossed outside of the crosswalk and was struck by oncoming traffic. Hunt hit by a car traveling outbound in between the intersections of Squires Road and Eagle Creek. Lexington police say they have worked more investigations this year like the one into the collision out here on Richmond Road than in most years past. In fact, this making 41 vehicle collisions with a fatality Lexington police have worked this year the most in a year since 1985. This morning's victim, the eighth pedestrian hit and killed in one of those collisions. That is the second highest since 1996. We don't have a specific underlying factor that would point us to exactly what's causing this, but uh, the vast majority of the collisions that we are seeing involving pedestrians are uh, people that aren't using the crosswalk or that are distracted. Sergeant Randall Combs says there are some exceptions to that, like the two men killed by a suspected drunk driver early Saturday morning. Combs says a majority of these collisions happening at a time when it is dark outside. Police urging folks to use crosswalks and follow their signals, also encouraging pedestrians to walk opposite of traffic and stay alert. Really, if we follow those basic rules, uh, it would help us greatly reduce the number of collisions that we have involving our pedestrians. In Lexington, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Way stations are meant to be a safety check for the trucks on the interstates. But what if we told you the way stations are not open very often in this state? It's a public safety risk and a revenue loss for Kentucky. WKYT's investigative reporter Miranda Combs has the story. And this way station is here is written all over the walls. Reminders for the vehicle enforcement inspectors that work here. High beam headlights. He's required to do so many of these thorough truck inspections during his shift. These lines here, that's his main air supply for this trailer. There aren't many like him in the state right now. Release! At least compared to the need. The wrong person behind the wheel, or you get a truck that's not mechanically sound, it's dangerous. His way station, the southbound London Scales, had 40,000 trucks roll past in September. Want to know how many he and his fellow inspectors were able to check of those 40,000? 
just 250. So that's a lot of trucks that we're missing. Because you miss what you can't see. Currently, way stations in Kentucky are only open 29% of the time in a 24-7 trucking industry. Right now, because of the manpower issues, we have so few inspectors at each installation that we're only able to keep them open so much time out of the 24-hour day. The time open averages out to be about 14 days out of the month that a truck might get checked. They need to be open. The scale houses need to be open. Gary Thornberry drives his truck through Kentucky three times a week. Everybody needs to be spot checked. You know, everybody needs to be spot checked. It's that, it's that simple. That's the only way you're going to weed out, weed out the bad drivers. He's been trucking for 30 years. He's noticed the scales he passes in Kentucky aren't usually open, but didn't realize it was this bad. It, it really surprised me that you said only 29% of the time. Like, what, what, what's the purpose of having if you're not going to have them open? That's a question. And it's something that we're attacking head on. We took to Commissioner John Mark Hack with the Department of Transportation. The number of commercial vehicle enforcement officers are at historically low levels. And that, Commissioner Hack says, causes a ripple effect. The scales are closed more, public safety is at risk, and money for Kentucky is left in the dust. It's safe to say that it's in the millions of dollars on an annual basis, and it's certainly sufficient enough for us to take a really hard look at the hours of operation. If the way stations are closed, the state isn't collecting fines and taxes from non-compliant trucks. The taxes that they pay go directly into the construction and maintenance of roads and bridges. That's if they pay their taxes. The ones that don't, we're told, do their best to avoid way stations. If they're open, they just go around them. That creates additional public safety risks. We caught one spot check by vehicle enforcement on I-75 while we were working on this story. The truck driver was arrested, but enforcement admits there aren't enough of them. And so many get by on back roads. They pattern us. They know when we're out, they know when the scale facilities are open, and so they know when that they can bypass. You drive a truck, you're supposed to be safe. You're supposed to get from point A to point B the best, safest, quickest way you can. You, if you're going around them, you're hiding something. Technology is trying to compensate for the manpower loss. This system, called the Kentucky Automated Truck Screening System, scans all the needed numbers when a truck comes through the way station. But it misreads a lot. And many times, inspectors have to manually punch in the correct numbers. We watched multiple trucks get flagged by the computer, but not checked by officers while we were there. Because you don't have enough staff that he's just getting by, right? Yes. Because we only have a few inspectors here at this location, we're unable to make sure that we're catching all of these. And since we've been here, we've had another one that has come by. Just pump it down until your uh, section brake pops in. The state is working to hire more vehicle enforcement inspectors to start building solutions to a public safety concern and money flying out the window. You know, my family drives the interstate, your family drives the interstate, and that's what we're out here doing is trying to keep the road safe. Now to remedy this problem, the state is working to hire 25 new vehicle inspectors right now and 25 more in the spring. One of the reoccurring concerns we heard during interviews, though, was the pay grade for inspectors is too low, therefore making it hard to keep them staffed. Frustrating. Mm -hmm. So the trucking companies and the truckers that are compliant, that play by the rules, they probably want most or all of these way stations open, right? They want a level playing field, and they also want those dollars to go to the roads because that's their office, and the better those roads are, the better maintained their trucks will be. Miranda, we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Speaking of interstates, Interstate 75 will be down to one lane in each direction for much of next week and part of southern Kentucky. The reason why, next here on WKYT News at 6. If you are planning to drive south of Lexington on Interstate 75 next week, you may run into some delays. That's because the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet says I-75 will be down to one lane, both northbound and southbound, through Rockcastle County at times Monday through Friday. Work will begin at 6 each morning, and all lanes will reopen at 6 each night. Crews will be performing pavement maintenance. Now, your hour-by-hour -hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. 
Well, a damp day for some of us out there. No, it's not a lot of rain, but uh, we weren't expecting a whole lot. We'll take each and every drop that we could get southeastern Kentucky, trying to focus uh, the greatest concentration of rain this evening into your neck of the woods and all those forest fires that are still burning. Live look outside, nine different sky cams uh, that'll take you from Corbin to Louisville and Etown and all points in between. Lexington, Frankfort, dealing with a mix of uh, clouds and an on and off shower over the past little bit. Jackson, we've got some rains around. That's a good thing, southeastern Kentucky, because obviously you've been watching our news. We've got the forest fires that continue to burn, in some cases, out of control. It may pick up on another round of some showers into Lexington over the next little bit. Let's start you out in the southeastern corner of the state. And this is the area dealing with the numerous fires that are out there, some of those bigger than others, obviously. The smaller fires, some of them, you've got a chance to extinguish those at least. The majority of them over the next little bit, or get them down to a controllable level to where the firefighters, the forestry officials can get out there and uh, take those down quickly. The problem with this is it's only a temporary break. I don't see a lot of rain coming up over the next four or five days at least. But what we are seeing right now from Leslie County into the Clay County area, Boonville, Owsley County, over toward Perry and uh, the Knott County areas, at least some downpours. A break in the action across parts of the Mountain Parkway. And then you get into the Bluegrass region. Notice we see another little band of some rains developing. That's just ahead of our front. What, look toward your northern skyline right now, southern and southeastern Kentucky, because what's coming at you is going to be coming at you from the north and the northwest. Behind that front tomorrow, Mix of sun and clouds, 40s to start, upper 50s to low 60s to end. It's going to be one of those days where you have more in the way of clouds where you live. You can be in the mid 50s, you have a little sunshine, you could be 60 or 61. But everybody, as soon as the sun sets, will see the numbers really begin to drop. Hour by hour, future radar as we go through the evening, still dealing with showers into southeastern Kentucky. And first thing tomorrow morning, it's a partly cloudy sky that will be noted. Current temperatures now. Into the 60s, into most areas, still just ahead of that front with 70 degrees across southern parts of the region. But the air around here is actually going to be coming at us from the north for a change as opposed to the southwest. That's where we had those 80s coming for the past couple of days. And you see what's going on in Columbus, Cleveland, into parts of Indiana, upper 50s to low 60s. And that's what's going to be setting up shop as we go into the day tomorrow into much of central and eastern Kentucky. And that forecast, uh, by the way, giving us the wet roads that are out there into much of central and eastern Kentucky. Let's get the seven day forecast. That's a little shy to pop up, and we will show you what we are dealing with across the region for the next week. Sometimes you just got to take matters into your own hands, and I mean that literally. Seven day forecast. I promise you, it is coming. There we go. Don't be shy, especially with the weekend. That is taking shape with low and mid 60s with overnight lows into the upper 30s. You got to be, you know what? I'm Some, not going to let the machines beat the man. All right? The technology tries to take over and you just have to get up it there does. and take over. You got to go over there and just kick it. All right, thanks. All right. Just ahead, Mark Stoops making his final comments before Georgia. The Cats finishing up practice. Stoops talking about Jacob Eason, Georgia's freshman quarterback, and the UK women's team. Exhibition action tonight at the Coliseum. We'll hear from McKay Laps. That's next. The Wildcats coming off the practice field within the last hour, and Mark Stoops said it's been a good week as his team gets ready for Georgia. Now the Bulldogs are led by a freshman quarterback, Jacob Eason. He's a big guy, 6'5", had his ups and downs this season. Stoops says he's seen improvement. Just a guy getting better every week and a and, uh, very talented guy. And, uh, you know, you know, watching this league, there's uh, always going to be some good moments and bad moments for quarterbacks. It's, it's tough. He's plays against a lot of good teams. And, uh, but uh, he's a very talented guy, and he, he seems to be getting more and more comfortable. With the turnaround Kentucky has staged after the first two weeks of the season, it has given recruiting a lift. Recruiting coordinator Vince Merrow, confident what the Cats are doing on the field will help in the future. Some of the ones that are committed to other places, and we always recruited at a high level, so it was at a good program. They see now what our, what our program, what, what our plan was, that we say, okay, 16, we thought we should get to a bowl game last year, but 16, you know, now we're shooting for it to see some success. So people seeing the turnaround and they want to be a part of it. 
The UK women's team hits the court tonight for the first time this season in its only exhibition game tonight. They host Union University. Coach Matthew Mitchell beginning his 10th season at UK. And after a tumultuous offseason, the Cats have six new faces but return all American Michaela Epps. Despite a lack of depth, Epps says this team is giving maximum effort. He wants us to be the team that has the best effort in the country, gives the best effort in the country, and has the best attitude in the country. So it's like ingrained in us. We know all he wants in order for him not to, you know, go crazy in here one day. He wants us to have a positive attitude and just give all the effort. That's the least we could do. You know, we're in here two, two and a half hours, and uh, we all have the same goal. And we know we can't come in here and pilly pally around and not give effort and then expect to go win games on the court. And Saturday's girls state soccer final is set. It's West Jessamine and Lexington Catholic. Last night, both the Colts and the Knights punching their ticket to the finals with stellar play in the net. From goalkeepers Olivia Williams of Catholic and Anna Rexford from West Jessamine. Their play was the deciding factor in the semis. Goodness, just save after save, just instincts, just, just, just heavy metal, just tough. Just, you know, said, you know what, I got y'all. Just, hey, just get me one goal. And it, it, it was unbelievable. I mean, you all saw it, breakaway saves. Per the Perry save down here was unbelievable. But, you know, she's done a game after game after game. Yeah, that first goal was really stressful. It happened, same thing last year. First 10 minutes we got scored on, but we came back. So it was kind of deja vu. But we did settle in like we did last year. It was nice. And they will decide the title on Saturday. The exhibition game tonight is free, free of charge. We'll be right back. Chris, some folks really need the rain, just not going to mm -hmm. get it. Yeah, getting a little bit in southeastern Kentucky, and uh, that may be about all she wrote for the next four or five days. Just tuning in, we'll be on the CW Lexington next live.